So I've been playing Hotel Dusk. Man, fucking games magazines in it, bruv. Like most of you, I have like nostalgic memories about stuff and old timey paper printed magazinos are definitely one of them. To be honest, I wouldn't really call these the fondest of memories per se, but then I'm also not old enough to have lived through the golden age. You know, the stuff that Americans in their late 20s and early 30s always go on about with their SNESs and SNESs being all like, remember how in the 1992 issue of Nintendo Power, it totally told you you could defeat Nega Golbez by equipping the magic amulet and then hardcore bomb the babombo whoa ninja turtle see like when i was little me and my friends just went to gamespy.com and typed up gta san andreas cheat codes and spent the afternoon going but I will admit that the demo discs that came packaged with Gaming Max were pretty fucking cool. Games like Tombi, Hogs of War, Vip Ribbon, Tony Cock, and even some PS2 titles like Final Fantasy X and Time Splitters were all games I got to know intimately through these titular demos and <laughs> Hey, you even got some free advertisements to go with it. Some of which would also occasionally pique my deek with some images of games to be. This photo of Ash has seen uh quite a lot of usage, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but of course, parents being parents, some limitations did apply in regards to how much I could actually buy. And thus, certain games would only remain but a level or an image in a video games magazine. Yeah, despite me always sucking Sting's dick whenever I review something even remotely adventure game related, the only one of their games I have actually played is another code and or trace memory. Now, I do obviously know what their other titles are about, like Glass Rose or another code R, through the stuff I just went on about in my wee little intro, but for as far as Hotel Dusk's concerned, I've never really got past the articles and pictures phase. According to said articles though, the game was about an ex-detective called Kao Ha venturing off to a mysterious hotel in search for his long-lost partner. On his way there, some chicks staring at him while he drive in his drive, being all like, Ooh. and him being all, Ooh. and me being all like, how mysterious. And then when he arrives, he starts getting spooky flashbacks to his past involving guns, murder, and kind of cheap looking film filters, making me go even more, how mysterious. So you grab Hyde by the touchscreen, shake him around a little, tap on his face a few times, forward some dialogue, chat with the guests and personnel, and explore these cute ass 3 environments with controls that don't actually suck as the entire thing is controlled through just using the touchscreen. Walking is dragging, talking is tapping, and the puzzles do all sorts of neat DS shit that's surprisingly ungimmicky. After all, it's one of them games that makes you hold the DS like a book, which <laughs> is also great for emulation's sake as it meant that I could avoid having to deal with the otherwise tiny ass screens. But uh, yeah, Hotel Dusk has a really good slow buildup, made to get you accustomed to how it'll expect you to play. The first puzzle, for instance, has you simply tapping the lobby desk bell twice like an actual person. The second puzzle sees the player scribbling on a piece of paper to make Cal sign a form. And the first proper non-introductory puzzle is... Well, <laughs> an actual puzzle. That's all a bit nutty perhaps, and one could totes be cynical about it and say that these are nothing but pointless time wasters and blah blah blah, but <laughs> shut up. <laughs> these simple bullshitteries end up adding a lot to the charm that comes from interacting with the game's world. Charm is most definitely the name of the game here, as the main crux of the gameplay revolves around banter with some exceptionally lovely people. Every chapter, being an in-game hour, starts off with Kyle establishing our itinerary, leaving you to leave the cozy confinements of your room to scurry around the hotel rudely nosing around other people's business claiming it as your own. Hotel Ducks dialogue system works via clues that you acquire by way of points of interest raised during conversation, as evidenced by orange text and cow going all deadly premonition on your asses. When you've gained a few of these, you can use those whilst talking to others or by throwing them right back at their point of origin. I guess it's a lot like what you'd see in other adventure games or even something like Phoenix Wright, only then a bit more casual and laid back. 
What I mean with that is, is that the game progresses rather linearly. Guile's able to start his sexy man ass around the hotel all he wants, sure, but there's typically only a few peopleable people around at the same time and rarely any more than three loin burning questions that only occasionally will actually transition in between conversations. And the few multiple choicey moments don't really lead to much in the way of player agency either. There aren't any paths, as it were, and getting something wrong will simply mean that the conversation will loop back on itself, or in the worst of cases, result in a comedic game over sequence, sending you back a whole one minute of text forwarding. Which is all totes Gucci, if you ask me, as it keeps the game from pulling a literally every adventure game ever made on you by forcing you to constantly backtrack back and forth between the same cluster of characters having to listen to the same expository HEY! WELCOME BACK! dialogue every single time. Though, on the dick flip, that does mean that the sleuthing isn't quite as sleuthy as, say, the Scar of the Doll more recently was, and it sure as fuck ain't no ace attorney either. But in my opinion, the presentation and writing suspend the detective vibes where the gameplay might falter. Perhaps making it a more casual experience, but also far from a tedious one just as well. Uh, thank the Lord fucker. Over the years, Japan has had some problems bringing their adventure games to western shores. That's because A, dudes are mad formal over there and that can sometimes result in odd dialogue when Englished, and 2, localization and translation are right bitches to deal with and can make the awkward even more awkward. Now, don't get me wrong, I loves me some awkward. Kingdom Hearts, Shadow of Memories, <laughs> anything Capcom, it's, it's great, but when a game tries to do something proper like Final Fantasy X did back in the day, certain scenes might come off as odd or cringy in ways that kinda ruin the moment a little. And with this game entirely being built off of banter, that would have not gone very well. So I'm pretty much punched as pleased to inform you that Hotel Dusk has some of the most naturalist dialogue on the block. Shit's just very nice to read and is full of character and other buzzwords. I don't know if they got like a sass planner or a vernacularist on board or what, but these 1970s American small town assholes all sound like proper 1970s American small town assholes. Granted, I'm not American, but I am an asshole, and I've also seen Twin Peaks once, and my dad watches all of those Welcome to American Auction Fucker Car Trader Dick Licker shows, so I don't know what I'm talking about. It's like you instantly get a sense of who's who and what they're about just from how they talk and animate. Kyle's a great protag in that sense especially. I mean, he's smug and disinterested, often keeping his thoughts and motives to himself, aka the player, but is still persuasive and kind enough to get the answers that he needs, but then also this smug fucking face. I genuinely started laughing out loud when I saw that for the first time, which sums up the overbearings pretty well, honestly. Is an adorable game. Everyone's cheeky, mischievous, and down to jest. And as a result, the back and forths one gets are a fucking joy to be whole. The cheeky boy trying to pry away at your secrets, the stern hotel owner who's still open for a giggle, a pretentious writer who can't help but mention his profession at every single turn, which is dangerously close to how writers are in real life. Kyle seems to uh, fucking agree anyway. And an annoying brat who don't take no shit, but has also a child still and thus a bit of a pussy, all look, talk, and animate just like how you'd think they would. I'd break it down, but I simply think seeing them on screen says more than enough as shit's really drawn that well. I mean, it almost looks rotoscoped in a way, but then it's also clearly anime, and I fucking love that. Either way, multiple characters means multiple plot threads, which is already quite a neat thing on its own, but when things start interchanging and intertwining in butt-curdlingly well-written ways, things are bound to get interesting. And for me at least, they genuinely did. I don't want to spoil anything, but slowly uncovering how all of these people who seem to be completely unrelated to each other at first are not only bound by destiny, but also play heavily into Cal's motives, being his lost ex-police partner Bradley, whom he's trying to track down because of crazy crime syndicates, mysterious artists, and small town crooks turned best buddies, was intensely engaging to me. Not to mention the cutie mute blonde girl wearing Bradley's old bracelet and the fact that someone using Cal's exact name has stayed at this very hotel just a little while ago. Yet nobody seems to remember. 
Oh, Jesus. So, while Hotel Dusk mainly revolves around character interaction and mystery solving by way of visual novel shit and basic exploration, like, seriously, you can fucking pick up, look at, and examine literally everything, there are also still some fairly basic adventure game style puzzles that, while not exactly difficult in any way, are made just a tad more interesting because of the DS its features. I would mostly describe the puzzles as neat. Grab the key from your pocket, click on the keyhole, knob that knob, wind that tape, fumble that flusher, and so on. As slow as shit may be at times, I can say that it never not felt good to have to do everything like this. It made me feel like a part of the world in a way, and it kept me engaged too, alongside everything else. Less like a novelty, and more like something that actually fucking fits with a slow Detectivo game. Now, of course, some of it is a bit more complicated, like this bit earlier on where you had to use pliers to cut a clothes hanger to pieces and then use set pieces to lockpick a briefcase. It never exactly hits rocket science tier though, but it's better than nothing and at least it incentivizes and gives purpose to the endless examining of menial shit. Hell, I even got stuck a few times having not gotten my pixel hunt on properly. Though, whether or not if that was my fault or due to the game's rather, uh, a limited view, often pushing me towards using the map screen to navigate and thus ignoring the blurry and virtually FOV-less 3D <laughs> is up for the bait. Don't get me wrong, I do love the visuals to death and it controls a fuck of a whole lot better than most other 3D DS games, but let's just say that there's a reason that the pixel hunting itself takes place on a completely separate screen entirely. Which does work, admittedly, as the chunky models actually make the examinable items stand out really well without it breaking the immersion at all. Overall, I'd say that while the puzzles are very simple and often obvious in their usage of items, it is the actual using of them that is far more interesting. This game is fucking great, but also glacially slow. I absolutely do not mind at all. Like I said before in other vids, some of my favorite adventure games count the likes of Shadow of Memories and shit like D2, the former being just walking in between cutscenes and the latter also just being walking in between cutscenes when the walks take like 20 fucking minutes and the cutscenes are all feature length. So uh, yeah, if you don't like slow paced story mystery games, don't even bother. But if you do, then Hotel Dusk is about as strong of a mystery adventure as you can get. The gameplay, while mild, does nothing but amplify the story and atmosphere in clever and unintrusive ways that never end up feeling tedious or contrived, and the story itself is also just downright fucking lovely. Like, the mystery ties it all together so fucking well, being logically written and easy to understand, boasting excellent pacing and really well placed plot reveals all without relying on out there bullshit logic and <laughs> also just all of these lovable gut-wrenching dick flipping belly laughing cheeky mischievous flawed but interesting characters and moments that elevate it to greatness i fucking love this game dude another code is easily top 20 goats of all goats for me but <laughs> this game just straight up took its fucking place and moved it up a few rankings while it's at it it's not some five hour small intriguing game. The whole thing took like 14 hours, which might seem like much, but it didn't feel long at all. I played Hotel Dusk over the course of about two weeks for about an hour and a half a day, and because of that, it fucking soaked the entire period of my life, and it's awesome. I will not forget this game ever. And hey, maybe you'll think it's pretty okay too.